If you've ever done any work looking at the magnitude of a star or trying to find how bright a star is compared to others, you may have come across something known as the apparent magnitude or absolute magnitude, but also bolometric magnitude. And in this video, we're going to have a look at what that is and how that differs from the apparent and absolute magnitude of a star. So a short recap then on apparent and absolute magnitudes of stars or astronomical objects in general, but it's mostly stars. The apparent magnitude is how bright we would observe a star from Earth or from our observation points. So how that how bright that actually appears to us, because it's it's basically distance dependent. If it's going to be nearer to us, it actually has a, a higher um, apparent magnitude or lower actually with the way it works. It will appear brighter to us. If it's further away, it's going to appear dimmer. Now for each magnitude difference, it's about two and a half times brighter. So if we had a magnitude zero star, or apparent magnitude zero, and an apparent magnitude one, then the zero magnitude star is going to be about two and a half times brighter. And it works backwards. So if you had a minus magnitude star, then it would be brighter than the one and the zero. So just some examples really to put that into context. Vega has an apparent magnitude of zero. And Polaris has got an apparent magnitude of about 1.98. It does vary a little bit, but it's around about 1.98. And that means that Vega is just over six times brighter than Polaris, how we would see in the sky. So it appears just over six times brighter than what Polaris would be, which is our North Star. Now, Sirius is a bright star. And it has an apparent magnitude of minus 1.46. So in comparison to Vega, which has this apparent magnitude of zero, it's just under four times brighter. So it, this is basically how it works, just to give you an idea of what the apparent magnitude means. It is the same for absolute magnitude. But the difference with the absolute magnitude is that it's from a set distance each time. And we're not actually going to it and measuring it from that distance because we can't. But the absolute magnitude is basically how bright or the magnitude of that star from a standard distance each time. So if you had two comparable stars, their absolute magnitude should be the same. But if we had two stars and they were different distances from us, despite them being exactly the same, they would have a different apparent magnitude. So your absolute magnitude is from the same distance each time. And it's about 10, well, it's 10 parsecs or 32.6 light years. Now, when we're looking at stars, we're taking measurements, we're not actually looking at the full electromagnetic spectrum. And the most obvious one, I suppose, is looking at how our eyes work. So when we look at a star, we're only looking in the visible part of the spectrum. Our eyes are not picking up wavelengths outside of that bandwidth. So we have quite a narrow range what our eyes can see. So when we look into the sky, we see how bright an object might be to us in comparison to another object. That's only in the visible part of the spectrum. And the same is true for cameras. So if you take an image with a camera, depending on what it is, so you might have a, an infrared camera, a UV camera, that have slightly different sensitivities, but you're not getting the full electromagnetic spectrum. And the same is true for, or as an example, the James Webb Space Telescope. And this is mostly set up for looking at the infrared. So you've got near infrared, mid infrared, and they're not looking at the full spectrum again. You're looking at a specific part of the electromagnetic spectrum that has been emitted from whatever object that you're looking at and taking an image of. So you're only getting kind of a snapshot of the emission from this object, which is not the true, well, I say brightness, but it's not the true amount of energy that's been given off by this, this object. Because stars emit over quite a wide range of wavelengths, and that is true for quite a few astronomical objects, they don't have a narrow emission. They're not just emitting in the visible part, which we see. They could, well, they're not they, more than they could. They are emitting on the radio part of the spectrum and to much higher energies as well towards the X-ray. And just to put that into context of our own sun, if we look at all the different wavelengths that we can measure here, well, this is just a few, actually. You can see that it looks very different in each wavelength that you look at. And that's because you're looking at a slightly different part of the sun. So different layers, really, different temperatures, so different energies involved here. But the bolometric magnitude considers the electromagnetic radiation at all wavelengths. So it's not just whatever your camera's detected, what your eyes are detected. It considers all electromagnetic radiation 
at all wavelengths because these objects are emitting across a very broad spectrum. And it takes into account things like extinction. So extinction is like a scattering and absorption of the wavelengths as it travels towards us. So if we have a star at some distance away, it's going to travel through some interstellar dust. Now the shorter wavelengths like the blues and further down, they are more susceptible to being scattered and absorbed. So we would see a star that would appear slightly redder because of this extinction due to the interstellar dust. So we're not actually measuring the true emission of that star due to this effect as well. And the bolometric magnitude or the bolometric absolute magnitude takes into account this effect as well. And then there's another thing as well. If we're taking measurements from the Earth's surface, so if we're looking at the stars in the sky, we're not actually getting the full spectrum or the full electromagnetic emission come to us because uh, the atmosphere blocks some of it out. And you can see here, it blocks out quite a lot of the, of the full spectrum. There's a really big window in the radio part of the spectrum, which is why radio astronomy is perfectly suited to doing on the surface, whereas different parts are more suited for space telescopes because you're not looking through the atmosphere. So we don't actually get the full emission down here as well. And the bolometric magnitude takes into account all of that as well. So you, if you were basically at the star, this is the full spectrum that you would get. Now, you can basically determine it or it's defined as the, well, from the star's bolometric luminosity. So on the right there, you've got your HR diagram, which is a plot of the luminosity of a star against its temperature. And you get this kind of nice plot here. And we use it for determining or looking at the stellar evolution because the stars do wander about on there as they evolve. And you can see the sun there. So you have that luminosity. So if you had the bolometric luminosity of the star, which is in watts, and you had the zero point luminosity. Now the zero point luminosity is the absolute bolometric magnitude if it was zero. So you'd have a value for that zero point luminosity and you'd measure the star's bolometric luminosity and then you would find your absolute bolometric magnitude for the star. So thank you for watching and if you enjoy then check out some of the other videos.